You good people are at a distinct disadvantage in coming to hear me. First of all, I have no papers and therefore you never know when I'm going to finish. You could say, oh, he has only three more inches to go. One of the reasons I never use a paper is because I once heard a woman speaking of a sermon of a bishop. She said, glory be to God, after he had read his talk. If he can't remember it, how does he expect us to? <laughs> You're going to hear a subject today that you've never heard before. I'm going to talk about pots, old pots. Have you ever called any person a pot? Sure you have. Do you know that God calls us pots too? That will be the sermon, pots. And I will begin it with a text from St. Paul. It is from his letter to the Corinthians. I heard a reader the other day read the epistle to the Filipinos. <laughs> instead of the Philippians. And another who read the second letter to the theologians. We are no better than pots of earthenware to contain this great treasure. And this proves that such transcendent power does not come from us, but is God's alone. Notice that we have a treasure inside of us, which is grace. Christ's life is in our body. But the body's a pot like a pot of earthenware. Never before has anyone put, put such a treasure in so trivial a deposit. God doesn't change the nature of our pots when he makes us his children. For example, Moses was called to be the leader of Israel, and Moses stuttered. Three times God said to Moses, or Moses said to God, I can't talk, I stutter. And God said to him, well, let your brother Aaron talk for you then. But he would not remove the stuttering. That was the nature of his pot. Peter was impetuous always impetuous. Thomas was lugubrious and sad, always looking for rain on the day of the picnic. God did not change his nature. Paul was a man of fire, rather intolerant. The treasure was put into that pot. And then, if we're ugly, God leaves us ugly. St. Vincent de Paul was a very ugly man but he contained a great treasure. So let me take you through scripture and describe God's way of dealing with pots. First of all, where does the treasure come from? Well, the treasure comes from God. And here we go back to the marriage feast of Cana. Our blessed Lord attended this wedding and there were six water pots, and there were large ones containing 20 or 30 gallons of water. Now this gives you some idea of how much wine our blessed Lord made, 120 or 180 gallons of wine. Now the water pots were used by the Jews for purification. They had a peculiar kind of washing. They had to wash their, their uh, hands in such a manner as to let the water drip down their fingers. Then they would rub the palms together. 
And some of these practices were so bound up legally that to break them was considered very serious. Now here we are just before our conversion. We're like these six water pots. Or before our baptism. And our blessed Lord changes the water into wine. He still keeps the same pot. The steward said they have no wine. Why didn't they have any wine? Why did it all give out? Can you imagine wine giving out in a wine country? And certainly, any father would prepare adequate wine for a wedding ceremony. Why did it give out? Because our blessed Lord brought along all of his disciples. They liked wine then. It was the first case of gate crashing in the history of Christianity. So our blessed Lord leaves the water pots as they are, but changes the water into wine. As the poet Crashaw put it so beautifully, the unconscious waters saw their God and blushed. One would like to write a line of poetry of that kind and die. When God changes our nature, it's very much like, for example, if this marble suddenly began to bloom. That would be something that does not belong to the nature of marble. It would be a supernatural act for marble. If the flowers on the altar of Our Lady suddenly began to walk around the room, that would be a supernatural act for a flower. And if a dog began to quote Shakespeare, That would be something that does not belong to his nature. And if we, who are just creatures of God, just pots, are suddenly endowed with a treasure so that we participate of God's nature as we participate of the nature of our parents, then that's a supernatural act for us. So when, therefore, does the pot get this treasure? It gets it at the moment that the soul receives grace. Now, how much grace and how much treasure do we receive? That depends upon our emptiness. 